Hey brothers, how are you going? You might recognise this guy. He's one of my uh, he's one of my patrons and uh, my mates. It's Crispy. How's it? I'll let you introduce yourself, mate. Oh well, yep. Yeah. As he says, I'm Crispy. Uh, Crispy Kiwi Adventures. Most of you have probably seen a few of my little uh, videos, but yeah, they're cool. How's it? They are cool. Yeah. So I said to him, hey, he's coming to stay. We're going to go fishing in the morning. He's brought a bit of venison up. We're going to cook up a feed. We're just going to go and pick up some par one hour for mate Simon. I said, hey, do you want to do a video? Uh, and what would you like to do it about? And we actually haven't got a theme yet. We haven't uh, decided what it'd be about. But uh, what would you like to talk about, bud? Um, what about compromise? Yeah, that's a good one. Compromise. Compromise. Yeah, okay. Let's just kick that one in the guts. Well, compromise is important, isn't it? Because often our egos are too big to compromise. You get with someone if you're in a partnership, say in a business, and you try to reach a compromise, and it doesn't always work out. What, what are your experiences with compromise? Well, I mean, we were just talking just before about the fact that um, I've been married for 25 years now. Yep. And I met my, my wife um, when we were young at high school. She's been pretty much my only one. And um, yeah, we're talking about how the average marriage duration now is about eight years. Wow. Eight, eight years. Eight years. Yep. And wow. we've been together now for 25 years. And we were just talking about what makes and what helps you yeah, last that long basically has it been a quality 25 years is the first thing that goes through my head because i do know or have got a mate that's been with his partner for 22 years and they've just broken up and he said look bro we should have broken up 10 years ago yeah and and that's exactly it i mean i i've just had a mate just recently who has broken up after 27 years right or around 27 years and for the last probably four or five years they've just been mates yep um, going through the motions and all the rest of it. So yeah, look, we have our ups and downs, we fight and we make up, <laughs> but compromise has probably been a massive issue in, in our relationship and marriage and right. that's probably me compromising with her and her compromising with me. It works both ways. Yeah. You can't compromise in a one-way street. Yeah. Because that will build resentment, yeah, and um, it will get a, that will get toxic, is, toxic. Is there anything that you can't compromise with? Do you reach any points? Things that uh, you can't? Oh, only if it's something that my wife's pretty much got in her head that she wants to do, <laughs> <laughs> and then you just don't go there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Then it's the, my favourite two words: yes, there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The power yeah. of yes, there. Yeah. Even when you're, um, even when you're right, and you know, you, yeah. <laughs> yes, there has got many a man out of the shit. One of the things that I have found out with relationships with women, and I'm not one to really talk about them because I'm not particularly good at relationships, but when there's a problem, ask me and want to fix it because well, that's the nature of us. But with a woman, when there's a problem, you want to fix it and then you go, well, what exactly is wrong? Are you okay? And of course she says, I'm fine. I'm which fine. Means I'm, I'm, yeah. not, I'm, I'm not fine. So then yep. you, finally then you've got this guessing game where you've got to guess what the problem is and you get to the problem and then you work out how you can fix it, but they don't want to fix the problem. What they really want to do is they want to vent how they feel about the problem. And that's the generally the problem's us anyway. <laughs> yeah, always. It's never them, no. So, so there's a, it's a, we're different creatures, but compromise in that situation there is sometimes it's a good way to end what could become an argument. And I hate, yep. I don't think you should be fighting against the person you love. So if you can say, hey, look, can we both meet a, a middle ground? It can work out, eh? Well and truly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and and being being also dare I say it, big enough and man enough to actually realise that some battles don't have to be won. Absolutely, you can have a happy median and a compromise where both parties walk away, not necessarily like a one. Yeah, but you've both you haven't lost and you've made up. There's no resentment there. Um, yeah. But again, it comes down to it's a two-way thing. It is you, a two-way thing. You've both got to be willing to compromise. If you stick your dig your heels in, or if she digs her heels in, it's not going to work. I mean, ultimately, if you love your wife, if you really care about her and she's really upset, and even if you feel that you're not totally wrong, by meeting her halfway and saying this and, and watching the relief 
and seeing her not suffer and feeling bad, that in itself should give you, or does give you, a feeling of, of well-being and happiness where you don't care about being right or wrong because you've alleviated her suffering and that's something that if I ever have a problem with my girlfriend, it's I'm sorry she's so upset and I've done something to upset her because it was never my intention, how can I fix this rather than the actual problem, first of all I want to stop her from feeling bad and it's a great feeling when you say listen honey I'm really sorry I, I, sh I could have done this better and, and you can see that she just is getting some peace because you're acknowledging and invalidating that she's not happy and that's probably more important than the actual problem itself. Part of being in a relationship whether you're married or not is you're a provider yep. but you're a comforter as well so going on to what you're saying it's part of our job we are there if, even if it is what we've done wrong or it could be something else but comforting your partner is part of it. Simple examples I've put off hunting trips because my wife has had a, a bad week yep. um, and something might have gone wrong at work yeah um and she's like you can just tell something's not right she needs you there at yeah, that time she, for support. yeah and she's like being i'm being like oh yeah okay hun and she's like yeah i'm fine okay, right. <laughs> those those words and i'm I, yeah. and i'm like you don't seem fine you seem a little bit a bit down a bit mm. bit, bit grumpy is everything okay and it's like you say you say grumpy and she doesn't give you a slap <laughs> oh well yeah 25 years <laughs> and i'll tell you what you stay home okay you can go hunting another another time but nine times out of ten i stay home yeah and she loves it that's cool and you're showing her a form of love aren't it you? is it is and it's showing that she's more important than what i was going to do yeah and chances are, by the end of the weekend, she is 100% better. Yeah. We've done something cool with the family. We might go out for dinner or something. That's or, cool, bro. Or we might just snuggle and watch a movie That's on, cool. on that Saturday yeah. night. That's cool. And, the, yeah, there you go. I've, I've compromised. Yeah. I've, I mean, it doesn't have to be a hunting trip either. I mean, I've, I've yeah, not gone to my mates or not gone not done things in fact i've actually not gone to work sometime too <laughs> well, just, because, that's, just that's, because she's um yeah. she, she's needed me that's yeah. that's that's really good yeah so. i think that's important and i i would do the same if i lived with a woman was in the same situation yeah. uh, but all having said that too there is there is a point where if it became too much all the time i have had a girlfriend that tried to control me with the hunting to the point where i was like sorry but when yeah. i yeah when i first met you i used to go hunting in all my spare time and nothing's really going to change there but that, that's compromising on a one-way street. Yeah. You're compromising. She's not willing to compromise. Yeah. yeah. That's building up. You you keep compromising. It's building up resentment. Uh -huh. Yeah. It will come to a point where you're going to hit that wall and, yeah. and something will have to happen. Yeah. So the two-way thing. So yeah, if you if you're in a relationship, not just a uh, husband-wife relationship, but any relationship, like mates, yep. mates also have to compromise. Yeah. So say you and I have been in the bush together for a week uh, hunting and we get in a situation like where, um, I don't know, maybe we've only got one raincoat and there's two of us because one of us left his raincoat at home and probably be me because I'd lose my balls if they weren't in the bag. <laughs> we've got the one raincoat and you're the bigger fella. Um, you make a compromise, you, you'd probably say, hey Clay, look, um, keep yourself dry and share it and, and, and compromise and get yourself wet just to, to share the load of, so we're both half miserable all the time rather than one dry and one. That's the sort of thing that us men would do and that's the, that's the form of compromise you do with your buddies. You are compromising yourself and you're also, that would be an example. Yeah, although well, I'd arm wrestle you for it. You'd arm wrestle me. <laughs> is that how you solve all problems, you arm wrestle them? Yeah, between me and my boy it is, yeah. Uh, well that's actually cool too, yeah, well I, I can tell you right now you'd beat me. But yeah, no, so that, that's exactly it, it's, it's yeah. I think you've got to you've got to have a um, you've got to have a bit of a kind nature as well to compromise. Yeah. Um, I do know people that just will not compromise. Me too. They, they will dig their heels in, and no matter what, they will not compromise. And there's nothing you can do about that. That's where you can still compromise as long as it's not an ongoing, regular thing that will become toxic. Yeah. Um, yeah. But should, if, if it's a one, with, yeah, one off every now and again, yeah. that's that's fine and that's acceptable. But it just it's not something you can take advantage of. I would say to anybody listening to Crispy right now, if you are in a situation with your partner and you are going to compromise something like an example of him giving up that hunting trip, make sure that when you do that, that there is no resentment 
afterwards and there's none of this afterwards. I gave up that hunting trip from the, when you were such and such, you don't bring that up because then you're, oh, 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 oh. Then you're turning something that was done as an act of love and it then becomes an act of hate. Yeah. It becomes, so, so don't, and don't treat things that you've sacrificed as sacrifices, treat them as your duty to your partner as the rightful thing to do because I've seen that being used and I've had a oh, girlfriend use, yep. use it to me. I had a girlfriend when I got very, very sick uh, in, in Asia and she I gave up this here to look after you when you were sick. Well, yes, honey, but I had typhoid and I was possibly going to die. Wouldn't that have been the right thing to do? And she never let me forget about it because she gave up her holiday with her girlfriends for the rest of the time and it's like, never, ever heard the end of it and I always felt bad. So, uh, uh, love, supposedly, is unconditional. So you make these sacrifices without conditions attached to them. Fair comment? Oh, well and truly. Heck yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. You've got to not. You've got to not hold grudges on on compromise. Um, otherwise, yeah. You, like you say, you're not compromising at all. Yeah. You're just shifting a situation back to your own benefit. Yeah. Which is not compromising at well, all. Well, that's that's more of a narcissist type thing. Thinking mm. about what your own needs are. Yeah. And a lot of relationships fall apart where one of the partners is a narcissist. One of them's always looking after the emotional needs and just cannot think outside of themselves. And if you tried to explain to them and said, "Hey, look, mate, are you are you aware of what you're doing?" They wouldn't see it. No. I'm just trying to think of a guy who I've been helping. His his relationship with his <coughs> wife is on the rocks. I love the guy to bits, but it's clear to me now that he is the problem. It's yeah. not her. Oh. And he is, he's just not making any form of meeting halfway or compromise. It's a great topic to bring up. Hmm. Just be good good one. One we haven't done on the channel and a and a bloody good one for a Oh, it's one about. of those kudos ones that nobody really talks about, isn't it? It's sort of a yeah. We all do it, but why do we do it and what's our reasonings for it? So yeah. That's what this channel's for though, isn't it? Yeah, opening up stuff and, and yeah. talking about it, any sort of problem. And on that note, if you've got any sort of problem, and it can be anything, it can be physical, like how to drain the bloody seawater out of the sump of your diesel engine on your boat because you didn't put a second bilge pump to back up the one that failed, or it could be how to change a spark plug on a on a um, hybrid leaf or a Telsa. Yeah, I don't think they have spark plugs. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's a trick question. Well, the hybrids do because they've got party. Well, the hybrids will. Yeah, yeah they, they, they have their little engines. Yeah. yeah. Don't so, think you'll find a spark plug on a Tesla. No, not on a Tesla, yeah. What do you reckon about Teslas? Would you oh. own a Tesla? I mean, you've got a Toyota Land Cruiser. I've got a Toyota Land Cruiser. If I could put a pretty flash electric engine in it, I probably would. They're pretty, pretty I can, amazing. I can see the benefits of it, yeah. but there's also the yeah, I mean, hey, that, that's another whole topic. But there is the flip side of um, what do we do with the batteries once they're all done? And yep. yeah, a few of the old Teslas over in the States blowing up with the last wee while. What is the battery life of them? Seven years or something? I don't really know. I've never really looked into it, other than the fact that I know that a lot of the smaller electric cars on the market at the moment, yeah. um, everybody's having to replace the batteries. Yeah, and yeah. it is thousands of dollars. Did you see that video of that guy that got so pissed off that he blew his up? This has got four million views on YouTube. Yeah, he lit, he lit it on fire and it blew up. Well, yeah. he, no, he, no, he got this guy. Oh, did he actually blow it up? No, he didn't. He got a guy, a YouTuber, I think it was Denmark or Finland or one of those crazy countries where they're all crazy motherfuckers. And he, was, he said, look, I want you to blow this up. So they put dynamite around it and they literally blew it to bits. Oh, my goodness. Yes, it was awesome, yeah. But that battery was <laughs> stupidly expensive. $20,000 yeah. to replace, so... That's why he, it wasn't worth it for him to do that. No. I can see a lot of problems. We're kind of getting away from compromise. This, <laughs> this is so typical of us. But I can see a lot of problems with electrical cars because of the actual cost of replacing batteries. There's and no compromise there, is there? No you need the battery and you, yeah. <laughs> that's the only way it's going to work. Yeah, well, there is no compromise there. Yeah, can't set up a hamster on a wheel. I don't know what's going to happen with all the um, farming and the forestry and the fishing industry with uh, using changing over to electricity, particularly forestry where you're at the middle of buttfuck nowhere with a chainsaw when you're using an electric one, you got to charge it. What do you have, a diesel generator out in the bush? Do well, you? hey, look, I mean, I watched something the other day and a guy was using a brand new electric digger, little little oh. 1.7 digger. Wow. Electric. Wow. He got one and a half hours out of it. Yep. Takes eight hours to charge. Oh, shit. Off a diesel generator. Oh, you're joking. Which was on site. You're joking me. What's what's the point? <laughs> well, that's actually going to cost more, isn't it? I know. Eight hours of running a diesel generator to charge this thing up for one and a half hours work. 
that's not very that's not efficient that's, that's not sustainable not. so they need to they need to do something with the batteries and the life and the amp yeah. hours of these batteries it's almost like the whole thing hasn't been thought of why they've actually executed these uh, new things but making it a three thousand dollar penalty pretty much is what you could say it is to people buying well what do you get three three thousand dollars more tax on a ute now is it the carbon tax is that right when you buy a ute is it oh, i haven't is looked it? at it can someone no. answer that? Oh, yeah. I don't know what it is, but I know that there's a definitely a, a rebate for buying electric. There's a big push for it, but I don't think they've caught the whole thing through. It's easy for me to say that, well, I've done nothing towards the environment, but I just feel with the, it's all a bit of a knee-jerk reaction after the last um, meeting they all had. The, oh, I don't know. Who knows what, the way the world's going right now, Crispy, who bloody knows man, exactly. what's going on. Exactly. It almost feels sometimes to me like the end of democracy, the way that so many people's rights have been taken over you just it's really it's bizarre the whole everything's changing rapidly and it's interesting too because you can bring that right back to compromising and yeah it boils down to the fact that yeah. our government is not willing to compromise they are ready to yeah do flash decisions knee-jerk reactions and make a decision on the spot yeah without actually thinking about it and well said. With no comp compromising whatsoever because what they think is right is right regardless. Across yep. the board. So, yes. Um, there you go, we've brought it back. <laughs> yeah, uh, look at these guys with these signs. Um, vaccine passports, equal right, departed, uh, first do no harm, toot. Give me a toot. toot for freedom. I've got a fucking horn. My horn's gone on this thing. Oh, it's broke. Jeez. There you go. Um, the toot, toot. Just send us out of control, it says. Oh, well. Um, there you go. Look at this uh, clinic. All these guys, Kiwis United. Vaxed uh, and this, unvaxed. This the That's fetch. what if this government is lying? Well, I'd say uh, they're, they're all a fair, fair yeah, question. all quite interesting. What, let, that aside, we won't get into that debate because that's a can of worms. But let's go back to the firearms uh, thing with, with this government. We had this uh, terrible incident. I'm not going to talk too much about it in Christchurch. But that straight knee jerk reaction was all the people that were legal with their firearms, like you yep. and me, yep. straight away were penalised. And I, I don't think that everybody needs to have an AR-15. I don't think everybody needs to have one. But guys that into duck shooting that are automatic. What was the load you no longer have? Was it couldn't have more than 11 shots? Or what, how did it work? No, you could have um, no more than five shots no in, more a, five shots. in a shotgun. Right, And okay. I think it was um, no more than 10 in a semi 22. Okay. But all military style semi automatics were. Well, I don't, have, I don't have a problem with that, but for as far as as far as the majority of people that were affected by that, they were pretty much law-abiding citizens, but you yep. know damn well that the gangs and the criminals, they weren't handing their, their, their firearms over, were they? Well, were the, they? The weird, no, heck no, because <laughs> crime's gone up. Gun crimes have actually gone up since. Oh, really? Yes. Since that? Yeah, since that. Is that, is that a fact? It's a fact that's gone up? Yeah, it's a fact. Yep. That didn't yep. work, did well, it? Well, I mean, don't quote me on it, but yep. I, you, you hear a lot more of um, gang-related shootings uh, in the last couple of years than we ever used to. Well, I don't think that a lot of gangs actually gave up their firearms. Oh, guns. nobody did. And the reality was, is they never got the amount that they were they were aiming for. Yeah, they, in fact, yeah. I don't think they even got half of what they for the guns that they had accounted for. I mean, we haven't had enough another mass shooting since, thank God. But it just seemed like over the top, and it's like they're not dealing with the root cause of the problem. I mean, there was a breakdown in that particular problem with a lot of things because that, that guy was a live wire that should have been picked up in the system long before it got to that stage yeah. and people reported so it's probably not a good example but again compromise the government didn't really compromise with us they just said this is the way it is well Re there was petitions there was referendum um, there was reference there was signed documents that all got passed in and none of it got looked at yeah the, the, referendums the, are pretty much a bloody waste yeah. of time in this the country. decision had been made yeah from the, from the get-go, the decision was made and that was it. It was decision yeah. final. I've never seen so much uh, separation since apartheid in the 80s right now with what's going on with mandates. Yeah. Again, there is no compromise. It's a flat thing. Yep. Compromise is actually a bloody, it's a great thing to talk about. But you can apply it to just about anything, can't you? Oh, well and truly. And yeah. I mean, sadly, what the government's turned around and done is they've created a division between the people. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, and a classic example is a, a good friend of ours. Yep. Um, and real close friend of my wife's yep. uh, turned around and said before I had all my jabs um, basically turned around and said that I was not invited oh, or really? not welcome in her house but apparently according to her because I 
well, haven't been, but I have been now. Yeah, yeah. But back when I hadn't, um, I wasn't allowed in her house. Yeah. I guess the only time that there's not compromise um, is if there's something that's going on that you know is inherently wrong and you won't compromise your belief. Say, say for instance, yeah. an act of racism or somebody's bullying something, somebody, uh, or something that's really detrimental and you've got to stand your ground. That's where the only time I would see the you're not going to compromise with that person. You're going to be this. This is as far as you're going, mate, and that's the end of the line. You've got to have. You've got to have your mark, don't you? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it comes down to the morals of the person and whether or not they will as well. Yeah, yeah. Because sadly, other people, some people will compromise on that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and and turn a blind eye and we see that all the time. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Stand out. Uh, interesting topic. Interesting okay, topic. well we're just about at my mate Simon's house. We're going in to pick up some power, which he's sharing for us, and uh, which is awesome. And uh, this has been the Bro Check channel. It's good to have Crispy on board. We might do a live later on, perhaps, or might do on the other channel. I don't know. You know, if you feel like it, it's up to yourself. Yes, yes. we do. Just for a bit of fun. Uh, good to have a brother come and see me. He's made a trip all the way from, is it Rangiora or from? Nah, from middle of Christchurch. Middle of Christchurch, Kai yeah. Boy? No, no, in Christchurch. In Christchurch? Yeah, Brighton. Oh, Not far from where you used to live. Oh, I used to live in Lever Terrace. Yeah, I'm in um, just off uh, Ashton. Down at Waimari Beach. Oh, yeah, Waimari, but nice, yeah. beautiful. Yep. Well, yeah, really good to have him on the channel, and uh, he's done a few videos for the channel now, which have gone really well. And I appreciate that, and I appreciate his uh, his reaching out and coming and staying with me. He's bloody good. Check out his own channel on 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 the uh, YouTube. It's a it's a cracker, and he does a live feed. Is it every Sunday, bro? Oh, I haven't for a while. I've been it's hard to busy watching yours, actually. <laughs> hard to, well, I, I stopped doing them. Uh, it's about a lot of commitment, but yeah. they are. Yeah. I, Generally, I probably will crank it back up um, once everything gets back to normal. Yeah. Uh, Sunday night, eight o'clock. Yeah. Um, we'll get them back going. You certainly compromise a lot when you have a YouTube channel, don't you? You do. You compromise yes. a lot. People don't realise the yep. work involved, and it's not just doing what we're doing now. It's the whole everything behind yeah. the scenes and all the work. Especially when you're running one that's nearly full time, but you're still working. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, yours would be a full time channel now, to run, wouldn't it? Yeah, it is just about a full-time channel run, but I still got to work because yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> I do, I, I do between twelve and fourteen hours yeah, every you'd, day. Yeah, you'd be full-time, wouldn't you? I'm, I'm full-time early morning. It doesn't stop. Yep. I'm running two channels, so it's it's a full-time job. But yeah. the thing is, I really love it. I really enjoy it, and yeah. that's why it's sustainable. If I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do it. And there will come a day where I say, "Hey guys." Oh, I really hate to say this, but I'm gone, <laughs> and you won't see me again. It'll yeah. come. I'll, I'll just. It's just like when I walked away from my circuit that I was playing in Europe all those years. People couldn't believe. Nah, you're not going because I was a name over there and it was big and like that was it. Yeah. Anyway, check on a brother. I'm checking on him and he's checking on me. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Go steady and we'll see you next bro check club video. See you later. <laughs> Great topic. Compromise.